Trouble sleep, young God, they wake up. Now this can't think they cause commotion. Uh, this rhythm got me feeling good. Uh, and this feeling got me in the mood. Uh, so I say, make a dance. I say, what's it? What do you want it? Can't look That's all I want, please. It's a banger. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Yes, <laughs> I'm so excited to make this video today. So today we are going to be talking about the myth and legend and folk tales that has um, perforated the Nigerian boarding school. Now the Nigerian boarding school is where people of high school go to, um, especially those people who, whose parents are very busy. Or for one reason or the other, they decided to, you know, put their kids in a place different from their home. So a lot of times here in Nigeria, people who go to boarding schools are people whose parents are always working. So they go there, they stay there. Now I personally do not have any experience with boarding schools because uh, my parents never allowed me to go to a boarding school. And guys, follow me on Instagram because I'm doing a 30 days Instagram photo challenge. So I'm actually wearing a very cute dress today and I'm going to be posting it on Instagram if you want to see it. Now one of the stories is about um, Lady Koi Koi. Now this took place in southern Nigeria, Calabar to be precise. And there was this woman, I think her name is Cynthia Bassi or something. It so happened that this woman, um, she taught in a boarding school. Now she was always in immaculately dress. She was always wearing red dress, red shoes. So that's what she was known for. And she was known to be also very mean and very, very strict with children. Like the kids in the school didn't like her. They never liked her so she was extremely mean to the extent that she would beat up kids for no reason and thought she was a terror in the school so one day some of the senior kids of that school ganged up and essentially beat her to death she was beaten to death and the koi 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 means you know when you have a, a re, when you wear high heels, there's a sound the shoe makes when it hits the floor. So when she walks, she makes this koi koi sound. So that's where the name comes from. Those students who ganged up against her, um, they wanted to just, you know, beat her up. But unfortunately, one of the students took one of her very high heel shoes and struck her on the head and she passed away. So what they did next was day um threw her body over the fence of the school and waited till um, a teacher found her body so when her body was found now there were about seven students that was involved in beating her up so when her body was found um she they took her to her hometown and they buried her. But something started happening in the school. Mysteriously, students started dying in the school after like three months or so. Students started dying in the school. And most of the students that were dying were those ones involved in beating her up. Now, I failed to mention that um, the one who struck her with the shoe actually um, took her shoe, also took her shoes uh, with him and hid it. So that's one leg of the shoes he used to strike her. He took the shoes for some reason and hid the shoes. So people started dying and they went to find out what was killing these people. You know, Nigeria, we, we have our own, we have our traditional beliefs, we believe in the supernatural and we believe in, you know, shaman, native doctors, herbalists and all, all those kind of stuff. Even though Christianity has overtaken the traditional beliefs, but I think the traditional beliefs are still there. We still have traditional rulers, we still have people who practice other religion besides being Muslim and Christian, even till date. So, as at that time, they said they went to find out why students were dying in that particular school. 
and it was found that um, some of the senior students were involved in killing a teacher that had just recently died so and when they went to um, make a reset they said six of the students that killed her had already died so when the students started dying it was found that that um, the ghost of the teacher that recently died has been haunting the school and the news spread out like everyone was like oh so student ganged up and killed a teacher and one of them the one with the shoes actually did confess that he was involved in killing the teacher so before um, the school has gone to find out what was happening to the students six of them had died remaining one now the last one was the one who struck the final blow with her shoes so for some reason he went to hide the shoes um, some people say he buried it some people say he threw it in water you know just to hide the evidence so her ghost comes in um, haunts the school or everybody's school looking for one of her shoes now the legend has it that if she comes to your school or comes to your dormitory you should have your eyes shut because if you open your eyes and she sees you she's going to kill you especially if you are you know living in a dormitory she assumes that you're a student and she assumes that you're part of the people who murdered her so she will kill you now what happened to the seventh person we don't know uh, if the seventh person died, the one who buried the shoe died. But we also we know that she has been haunting schools ever since. Like, ever since. It's, yeah, scary, right? That is scary. And a lot of students, a lot of people have testified to hearing, you know, such noises in their dorm, outside their dorm houses, in various Nigerian boarding school. What do I think about the story? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what to believe because I have had my own brush with the supernatural so I'm not going to say it's true or it's a lie but that is a very common story in the Nigerian um, high school especially in boarding schools you will always hear that so now guys that is this another story that is very wild to me um, I don't know what to think about this one this one is um, called beautiful plants in this girls in this girl only boarding school um, they asked the girls to only make cornrows on their hair. That was like the acceptable style for students uh, back in the days to make as a hairstyle. Now there was no readily available hairdresser in the school. So sometimes the children had to wait till maybe there is a public holiday or um, their parents would come and take them to make their hair or they would invite a hairdresser somebody to come and fix up their hair but there was this particular girl whose hair from week to week remains immaculate like when all the braids are getting old if you're an african woman you know um after when you make your plaits after some time they start getting old so when all your braids uh when the plaits are getting old for this particular girl her plants were not getting old so um, the students began to wonder the secret behind it why wasn't she um, visiting the hairdressers as much as other students were visiting the hairdressers so everyone became curious but no one acted upon it you know everyone just talked about it in passing and, and that was it hmm. someone like me that is very curious <laughs> I will find out why your hair is immaculate but well so one night um, it was said that one of the students were just she just woke up and she wanted to go out to to wee or go to the toilet and she was passing by that girl's room the girl whose hair was never messed up her room and what she saw was terrifying she said she was passing by so when she passed by she happened to look into um, the window in the dorm there was a mirror um, in the dormitory so she happened to look into the mirror and she found a, a, a the head of the girl on the girl's ties like she took off her hair on her ties put it on her took off her head rather and put it on her ties and was just braiding her own hair you know 
um, yeah, she said when she looks away from the mirror and looks at her, the girl was just said to be sitting on the bed staring at the mirror. But when she looks into the mirror, her head was actually on her thighs and um, she was breaking it. So she screamed with what she saw and people came. Now before they could come, um, the said girl, the girl whose head was on her thighs, had disappeared. Since I've been living with a ghost um, since she came into the school. Even till today, um, I unconsciously do it. I, If I'm working with someone and I accidentally come across a, um, a mirror, I always look at the person and look at myself uh, to know if the person is a human being. I don't know if I'm the only one that does this. If you do this as an African or a Nigerian, please let me know. Now, the next story is about a nun. Now, this nun was said to be stranded um, on the road. Then a car. I don't want my, my makeup to be... This is daytime milk. I don't want my makeup to be popping like that. You know, I just want to look very, very natural. I don't know how to make all those Instagram popping makeup like... I don't know. I've not had interest in it. Maybe someday, who knows? Maybe someday I could I could do something with it. I could learn how to. But actually I do prefer the very natural looking face. Just minimal makeup, that's what I prefer. It's not like I wouldn't want to go to a makeup artist if I have something special like probably wedding. Um, birthday or something. I'll go to a makeup artist and get that bomb ass makeup. But for me, spending my time and learning skills on how to when I find out really, really tiring. So <laughs> I don't think I will be doing any bomb makeup on this channel any day. So if you're watching me for my makeup, please don't. You'll be so disappointed. Uh, like I always say, I oh, I do these things. I make up. Um, um, just to have something to do with my hands and also most of the time when I film I always film to go out or maybe run around so it's an opportunity for me to tell my crime stories at the same time do my makeup so if you are like I've had one comment on my ch on my channel that I talk that one I had one comment that says oh I don't know what to do is it that I'm watching you wear makeup and listening to your story well, my answer to that is uh, you can listen to me and you can also watch me. I mean, the makeup doesn't take away from what I'm talking about. Uh, now, the third story is about a nun. Now, this nun um, was stranded by the wayside. So, uh, there was a good Samaritan, a man was driving by and the nurse flagged him, the nun, sorry, flagged him down. And when he when he stopped and she when he stopped asked her where where she was going to she refused to say anything so he was like I'm willing to take you to wherever you're going to just tell me where you'll be going to she refused to talk to him so the guy became um, worried sort of like okay I'm going to stop this car where exactly are you going to she said she doesn't know where she's going to, but what she knows is that she died two days ago and she just got, up, got out of the cemetery and that she's looking for her cathedral. That is the place where um, she used to serve, like the place she used to be a nun at. So <laughs> this man now, he, was, he became very frightened, very confused and instead of screaming, for people to come see that he has carried a ghost and then he, the, the nun disappeared that the nun disappeared so the moral of this is that um, you shouldn't talk to strangers you know if you talk to strangers you might um, be interacting with a ghost or someone who is dead you know I mean ghost is people who are dead right why am I having a brain freeze? What's up with my brain? <laughs> okay, it might be interacting with a ghost. So the moral of it is that kids shouldn't interact with strangers no matter what. And also adults shouldn't just you know, pick someone on the roadside. They might be picking a, 
um, it goes. Now this particular story um, is in the middle bed. This part, this fourth story I'm going to tell you guys happens in the middle bed. I don't know if it still happens because the river is still in existence. Like um, this particular place is still in existence. It's a whole community. It's a whole region. So I don't know. I haven't really met anyone from that region for me to confide. Uh, for me to confirm this story however um it's online and i from people from comments online i heard it's true that whatever the story is about that it is true now this story is about a river in the middle depth of nigeria now this river is filled with fishes um it's it's filled with fishes a lot of people fish there and use the fishes as a source of livelihood but there is this particular fish in that river that you don't um, you don't catch now what they said that if you catch this fish and you cook this fish it will never get done that it will be raw no matter how long you cook it and if you let the bones of the fish of the fish pierce you that the, the wound will never heal hmm. I think maybe I should I should confirm this. <laughs> I think maybe I should confirm this because the river is still in existence and I know certain people from that region. I think maybe I will confirm this. I will, I will, I will look into it and see if it's real because I also heard that even the war some people turned into this fish and escaped being captured during the civil war we had or sometimes even tribal war that some people um just turn into the said fish and you know escape being captured now my other story is about this one is very popular this one is uh i think maybe it might be the most popular story ever called um bush baby now this bush baby it's said to always show up in boarding schools um, to take away kids children now what happens is at night you hear a cry like that of a cat or you hear a baby a baby crying and if you hear that sound um, and you come out of your dumb room you're going to disappear forever now this this bush baby is said to be used by devils and demons to target children and people the children who usually go missing from the tempting or from the cries of the bush baby are junior students like people in jess one just to those ones who just started secondary school who just started boarding schools they said that they are much more vulnerable to the cries and screams of the bush baby now bush baby have they ever seen one <laughs> i have never seen one but i have a picture of what the bush baby might look like in my head have you seen king julian um yeah i think bush baby might look like mort each time i hear bush baby i always envision mort in my head even before i saw king julian so when i saw king julian the movie i actually thought <laughs> I actually thought Mott was a bush baby, you know, but hey, we all have our imaginations, don't we? So, I don't know how true this story is, but me, I think probably it's cats. You know, cats sometimes they meow, and the meow looks like that of a baby or a child crying, you know. So, I think maybe they hear cats cry, and probably they formed, I don't know how this story got along, but they say if you come out of the dormitory when you hear the scream of the bush baby that you're going to disappear or you're going to get eaten so it's a popular myth or popular popular legend or folk tale um in nigeria i hear about the bush baby the bush baby there has been a lot of um books online written about it i think maybe not books but articles online written, written about it so if you google bush baby nigeria you see the story online it's actually down line now this other story is about a mermaid like guys 
the Nigerian mermaid is different from Disney mermaid. Like the Nigerian mermaid is even some even even it has also been like if you go to some churches, um, they pray against the marine spirit, against the water spirit. The mermaid is not welcome in Nigeria. So when you talk about mermaid and you talk about they will tell you you're evil. People look at you like an evil person because mermaid is not a welcome thing here. Um, mermaid is connoted or uh, mermaid is connoted to something very bad, some something evil. They call it money water. Now it said that um, legend has it that this mummy water will come out at night um, to bathe and comb their hair. Now, what happens is sometimes they forget these combs they use in combing their hair. Now, mommy water is half man, or, no, mostly women rather, half woman, half fish. You know, the normal mommy we know now. So, when they come out, they always come out at night to, to bathe themselves and comb themselves, you know. So, when they come out like this, sometimes they forget their stuff, like maybe their comb or they are cleaning accessory, whatever they use in cleaning themselves. Lucky to get a hold of any of their accessories, they'll come and visit you at night and ask for their stuff back in exchange for uh, they're going to give you wealth beyond what you can imagine. And they will use that opportunity to possess you, like possess you um, and rule possess you and express yourself, and express themselves with your own body now the church mommy water like the one that is you know usually um, talked about by the spiritual Christians some Christian sector here in Nigeria is that the mommy water spirits they are evil they make you do very evil things like they can make you have um, they can make you have they can make you have downfall in your business or they can make you fornicate or commit adultery or do the things that you're not supposed to do in a society so most of the time when someone is bad quote unquote they attributed that the person has been possessed by a mermaid spirit so mermaid here is not like Disney sorry Disney but uh, <laughs> Uh, we don't see Nigerians don't see mommy the way you do don't see mommy the way you do girl and when a girl is very beautiful they always most of the time say she's possessed with a marine spirit um, when a, a woman it's mostly a woman guys I've never seen a man a man that is said to to be possessed by a marine spirit in this part no it's mostly women and mostly beautiful women are targeted so so if you're beautiful, you will most likely be turned in money water in these parts. That's just what it is. So yeah, guys. Then now uh, I'm going. Uh, before I forget, there is this other story I want to tell you. You know, there is this ant hill or mole hill. If I see the picture, I'll put it here. Ant hill. It is said that you shouldn't um, destroy a ant hill because there is this invisible creature. Now this story is uh, told by. Um, the Muslim boarding school like in the northern part this story is not so prevalent here People really don't know about this story in the southern or eastern part of Nigeria where I'm from But in northern part of Nigeria there is a story called Jean. Now Jean is a small um, Invisible creature like very tiny creature that is that is capable of doing evil like they gouge out people's eyes is they um, Jinx people into making them commit this word. I don't know because YouTube YouTube will send me to making them commit these words. Now it's all started by um, a small boy destroying a mole hill or an ant hill. So um, when they when he destroyed this ant hill, he released these small these small demons known as jinn. Says that if you destroy a ant hill, you you stand the chance of um, releasing these invisible creatures. And I know kids when I was a child. Um, Things like Ant Hill, Mo Hill, it's like an attraction for me to go play. Like, I would want to destroy it. Seriously, it was like an attraction for me to play. So, hearing this now, that that um, 
destroying that molehill we can release some evil things i'm thinking how many of these things must i have released you know <laughs> you never know where your problems are coming from guys you never know so how many of these things would i have released uh, as a child you know always love to destroy things man i was not an easy child i was this very curious very stubborn child so yeah I'm sure I would have I'm sure I must have destroyed a couple of ant hills yes so that's the gene story then this one is very popular I remember when I was a child um, at night my father would always warn me not to whisper in, in, in the night now in fact till today I don't even whisper at night like I mean not whisper whistle oh my god what is whisper whistle like you know that sound yes we, it's not it's not advisable to do it at night here yeah, my father always say do not ever whisper in the night that when you do that you uh, invite evil spirits when you do that you invite evil spirits to you so you never ever whisper I never ever whisper at night for that well I don't know should I try it I don't think I want to try whispering at night <laughs> that's one of the superstitions or beliefs that in Nigeria it's not um, limited to the boarding school alone is I think most or some household actually hold that belief that if you whisper you release demons or you call snakes into your house so that's one then the last story guys I'm done with my makeup uh, let me tell you the last story the last story is uh, about uh, I've forgotten the name of this of what it's called but if it said that in a boarding school if you leave your shoes um, scattered like you do not put them by your bedside um, a demon will come wear them walk around with them and come put it for you and that day you will experience like maybe very bad grades very low grades you experience downtime so personally i think there's a there's an agenda towards that one because we know that students can be very untidy so i guess that story um was thrown around to get kids scared so that so that they can put <laughs> their shoes or their clothing in the appropriate position instead of just littering it about littering it about guys so that's it guys i'm done with my makeup i'll see you on sunday with my mukbang video uh, once again i want to say thank you so much for watching me please do not forget to like share comment um even if you don't want to share it's okay even if you don't want to comment and like that's also okay um i'm super grateful that you are actually watching me yes um Thank you for, so much uh, for staying by me. Thank you so much for coming back to this channel. I love you so much. Yeah. And don't forget to check out my Instagram, guys. My Instagram will be hot. I'm doing 30 day challenge of posting on there. It doesn't matter what I post as long as the post come up. <laughs> so, guys, if you want to know what I'm doing every day, this outfit I'm wearing, um, I'm going to be posting it on Instagram today so go over there check follow me um yeah that's it um i'll see you again on sunday Bye.